This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway, supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. Hey guys, it's the awesome chat. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter and Mayhem Studios here in beautiful, lovely, whitewashed Pittsburgh, PA, with the snow out there. And uh, and 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 but but it's okay. We got people in the studio. We got somebody to talk to this week. We've managed. We are not strangers to this weather. Not that you care. You're probably watching this three three weeks from now, and it's beautiful outside and 60 degrees. Um, and now we've become a podcast that talks about the weather. But uh, anyways, this is the Awesome Chat. We talk with awesome people in Pittsburgh and abroad. And if you look at the list, we talk to, to people from all over doing all kinds of awesome things in technology, podcasting, social media, or just helping people out. And we got a really good one this week. But first, before we get to our guests, please check us out at awesomecast.net. That's where you can subscribe to this to see the back catalog of interviews that we've had. Um, Recently, we've talked with the co-founder of Livestream, for instance. We've talked with uh, Brian Crawford for over that at the RiversEdge.com, an awesome 24-7 uh, Pittsburgh-based radio station podcast situation over there up in Millville. And uh, please check out uh, the main show and check out uh, support us on Patreon if you're liking what we're doing, or just share the show with a friend. And you can drop us a line at AwesomeCast on the Twitter, Facebook, and AwesomeCast at SorgatronMedia.com. So I'm always excited when I get another podcaster on the show. We get to talk. Talk. We get to talk shop a little bit typically with these kinds of things, and I got a guy that uh, I was I was introduced to online and then reintroduced to in person several months ago as I as I uh, moved my stuff into uh, work hard Pittsburgh up there in the Allentown Allentown neighborhood. With me on the couch in the studio is Professor Buzzkill of Professor Buzzkill Podcast. How you doing, sir? That's me, Mike. Yes, here I am on the couch and enjoying the couch because it's very, very comfy. Yeah. And I have to tell you, Pittsburgh is a lovely town. I'm not allowed to disclose my uh, actual location. Uh, uh, Sorgster, should I call them that? The people who listen to your show? <laughs> Because we have a lot, lo- we have lots of problems with stalkers, and of course, we talk about the military and secret uh, things like the CIA. So there is a, little, is a little bit of a safety concern. So we keep on the move, but we have worked in Pittsburgh before, and it's a lovely town, absolutely lovely town. Yes, 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 it is. And, and, and so uh, the, the Professor Buzzkill podcast, um, I, I it, it's a, it's a it's tell people what it is. We try to bust historical myths that have actual significance. Not, you know, there is no Santa Claus. Not, that you know, there is no Easter Bunny. Although, if my kids are listening, there is a Santa Claus and there is an Easter Bunny. I'll lock that down, yes. But important historical myths about important uh, uh, his, uh, political events, social events, social changes, things that people think happened, and, and, and those things that have changed people's minds about certain things. Uh, for instance, we just did a show on the atomic bomb in which we talked about the myth of the necessity to drop the bomb, the myth of when the bomb was going to be dropped, why the bomb, bomb was dropped when it was, and we talked about all the background of the bomb. And, of course, the fam- most famous myth we've ever done, the first one we did, was the myth of J. Edgar Hoover being a cross-dresser. Uh, that wasn't true, and it, but it is one of the sturdiest, hardiest myths there is going out there in American history, and it makes people think slightly differently about the origins of the FBI and who, what kind of weirdos are running the FBI and what kind of weird organization there was. So we're hoping to break those myths down. But in doing that, what we want to do really, really is to bring the, the, the bigger history to the people. We use the Hoover cross-dressing to talk about the buildup of the police state aspect of the FBI and the U.S. government, basically. That's awesome, and, and and of course, you know, uh, history. I think is a thing that that really gets a lot of people's attention. I don't even know how many history channels are on television these days, mm. and some of them are questionable in the roots of being <laughs> history these days. Uh, from 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 my recent experience watching them, uh, but uh, you know. What are you finding? Um, you know, it, it sounds like from from having discussions with you, the reaction has been pretty tremendous yes. uh, to your show. Uh, what do you think it is that are attracting people to uh, history in general, and say your brand of, of telling that history? Well, a, a few things. One, we think that you can, by listening to our show, you can be either the Cliff Clavin or the anti Cliff Clavin 
of your office or your workspace. I don't know if the younger people remember Cliff Clavin, but he was the trivia guy on Cheers and was always coming in and saying, you know, so and so and so and so. The mailman, right? Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And half the time, all of that stuff, when he was talking about history, uh, was myth. But what it was surprising early on in the show because I had listened to a number of podcasts and it, it it seemed to me that you had to have a kind of comedy show with a little history involved, right? And so that's what we built up. And people, a lot of people liked it. A lot of people didn't like it. And what really impressed me about the podcast audience, the podcast universe, if you will, is that people said, no, we want really good history. Cut out the joking around, cut out this, cut out that. And so we did. We the more the more historical we get, the more technical we get, the more uh, professional historians we interview. Our downloads go way way up. Now I'm not to say that's not saying we're dry, or or humorless. We 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 try to be as lighthearted as we can. But I was very very impressed with both the American public and the international public because we have a lot of international listeners. Really wanted the stuff, you know. They wanted the, they wanted good historical material, good historical myth busting. You know, to a far greater degree, degree than my old college students want. Well, you mentioned that, and that was very interesting because I, did, I didn't know your background until I, I listened to a recent um, a recent podcast uh, with our friend Ronald Renwick, uh, who, who I went to high school with, by the way, mm-hmm. of, of small smallest of worlds. Uh, and and you are not just a person who's an enthusiast of history, although I'm sure you are at, at the base of things. <laughs> but you're you're the professor is actually a a a proper title. I know a lot of people in the professional wrestling. Uh, uh, industry that's calling themselves doctor that I want to see their credentials <laughs> with. I'm really questionable about a lot of those guys uh, uh, floating around there. Some that own certain promotions that I work with. Um, but uh, but 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 you is for real with you? Yes, I I have a doctorate and I was a professor for a number of years, uh, many many years. Uh, but the lure of show business was just too strong, and I had to get into the podcasting world. And I I remember from way 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 back when. Uh, when, especially, I did my master's degree in Australia, and there was a show oh, wow. called "The Could Have Been Champions," which was a sports talk show, and it was a, a very serious sports sports talk show. And they got a lot of information across, but they also joked around a lot. I was very impressed by that. And when I went to England to do my PhD, there were a lot of shows like that on the radio. So that this kind of sh- uh, thing has been a part of my life for thirty years. And I thought to myself, "Well, you're having a life transition. Why not do this?" And it's been a blast. It's been an absolute blast. I can talk about history. I can talk about stuff that's outside my field. I can interview experts. Mm. I can interview friends who are also experts. So it, it couldn't be better. It couldn't be a better way to work with history and yet have you know fun doing it. That's awesome. I, I, I tell them you're, you're able to bring that uh, uh, life experience, and I'm I don't know if it's me. I'm always impressed when I hear someone's like, "Oh yeah, I, I, I was in Australia for a bit," you know, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like you actually got out of Pittsburgh and were doing things. I don't even know if you you, you originated here or anything. I was living uh, in California. At the California, time. but even that I'm supposed to keep quiet because you know I don't want any of these uh, whack jobs. Um, Tracing me, trying to find me. We have, you know, we have security concerns. We have, we have other concerns. So there is that, and 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 we've talked about that, and so kind of the uh, the the people that something like this attracts. Because some people are, I guess, enthusiasts of another nature. To, the history, historical. And use quote facts. Yeah, right, <laughs> When it comes right, to right, that, right. and um, I mean, is you know. You, I think initially uh, uh, somebody who's not in the field would, would think like really like who's who's really that concerned with history that 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 they would have that kind of strong reaction to it. Um, you you're deep into uh, uh, this this catalog on your show. Like what like what are what's happening? What are the reactions that you're getting? Uh, the reactions we're getting are very favorable uh, mm-hmm. because we're taking. Uh, myths that either are relatively small and can be easily busted, we call those mini-myths, or larger myths that need a lot more conversation. And so the Hoover one, for instance, needs a lot more conversation. But while we were talking about Hoover not being a cross-dresser, or more technically accurate, there's no evidence that Hoover was a cross-dresser, um, we also talked about the other aspects of Hoover's personality that we, that we knew, might have known about and how that might have affected his job. So we weren't what we weren't saying was, it's not fair to call Hoover a crossdresser because he was a great man. You know, it's not fair to call Hoover a crossdresser because it was the, he built the FBI and that's the greatest organization ever. I mean, that's not the thing we're doing. We're busting the myth, but also laying out the complications of the larger question we're talking about. 
So that's what I think that's what differentiates us from just a myth busting show. And it also differentiates us from just a history show where we say this happened, then this happened, then this happened, then this happened. Right. It's not retelling a history, but it's an, it's an, it's an investigation of history. Right. Exactly. That's, exactly. that's interesting. You know, I, I think, you know, obviously today television, we're big on the crime shows and, and mystery mm-hmm. solving. And that's the biggest thing on Netflix right now is 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 like well, how to make a murder. I think it's called. I haven't checked it out yet. Um, I don't know. True crime season two kind of disappointed me and I don't want to go back. Uh, but anyways, <laughs> uh, but 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 it really is a little bit of that investigation. But um, what is the kind of difference? Because you're investigating something that happened 50 years ago, 80 years ago, 100 years ago, whatever the case right. may be. Well, Remarkably, uh, and it's often, you know, most people don't know this, and it's, it's often hard to believe because it seems like the evidence would be destroyed or, or non-existent, but an awful lot of evidence still exists. You know, we can talk a lot about George Washington and his generation in terms of what they did and what they didn't do. Um, now, not, not, you know, their whole lives don't exist as an evidentiary sort of platform, but well, especially as, the 20, as we get closer to the, the, the modern times, you know, there's lots of evidence about what people did and what they didn't do. And the biggest thing we can ever say about something, we, we try not to ever say something's not true. We always say there's no evidence for it. So there's no evidence for the fact, there's no evidence for J. Edgar Hoover being a cross-dresser. Now, he may have been a cross-dresser every night for all we know, but he was if he was careful enough to hide it, all the evidence, then we have to say there's no evidence for it. So... The, the, the problem there, though, is you see the, those stories are so embedded in the culture that people, even responsible people, newscasters and on and on and on, just repeat it as if it's fact. And it just becomes, you know, uh, just becomes another uh, assumed fact, in, in, especially in American culture. It's very interesting because uh, I know the conversation I'm listening to the podcast. I think we mentioned it a little bit on, on Awesome Cast even this week um, is this accountability and people kind of um, um, putting out you know things that are untrue or uninvestigated that they've mm-hmm. heard. And that, just because you saw it on Twitter a bunch of times, again, it becomes part of that culture and everything. It sounds like you're also sort of delivering a, a lesson in accountability as well. I hope I am. I hope I am. I hope that when, especially if students listen to the show, they're careful to think, okay, this sounds a little bit out of the ordinary. Maybe I better check and see where it comes from. And what you often find is that there's a story, the the further back you go, there's an original story, and then there's something called the dropping of qualifiers. So someone said back in the 20s, I may have heard the other night while I was drinking that from, from some... Uh, you know, Justice Department person, that Hoover may may be a cross-dresser. Well, there's a may, there's a while I was drinking, and may have been a cross I may have heard while I was drinking, and may be a cross-dresser. He says that to somebody. The next person that, that says that to, the, to another person drops the one, at least one of the qualifiers. So I heard the other night that Hoover may be a cross-dresser. And then that gets passed on, and the next person that says it to someone else says, I've heard that Hoover is a cross-dresser. And then finally, these qualifiers, I've heard, get the drop completely. Hoover's a cross-dresser. It's, 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 um, it's a sociological uh, communication, so sociological uh, phenomenon. I forget what the technical name for it is. But the further it goes down the chain of conversation, the more qualifiers are dropped, and suddenly Hoover is a cross-dresser, even though it started off as, well... You know, I heard maybe blah 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 blah, and you know, it's it, I don't know if it's true, blah 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 blah, but eventually it gets down to the fact. It sounds like it sounds like the historical version of the telephone game. It's exactly that's exactly what it is. That's exactly what it is, and un, and and unfortunately, by the time it doesn't take long to get to that final point where they say Hoover was a crossdresser, and then that you can't drop anything. There's no qualifier. There's no maybe, perhaps. There's nothing like that. So people just keep repeating Hoover was a crossdresser, Hoover was a crossdresser, Hoover was a crossdresser. And then it's stuck in the American consciousness and it's almost impossible to dislodge. I heard it on, on uh, a Slate News the other day. And Slate News is an otherwise responsible podcast, uh, otherwise responsible news oh, source. We see that in, in, in the news today. They have these pundits come on. They say things that they think, they heard, they, they yeah. believe. Um, and that becomes, well, yeah, Obama's a socialist or whatever the case may be, right. not to get political. Um, but, uh, you know, it's it and that now 
I go and you go home for Thanksgiving, and mom's and, and grandpa says, "Well, that's socialist in the White House." It's like that's it's not a fact, you know. Yeah, it's just somebody, yeah. some somebody keeps saying on CNN, and now you think it's true, um, and and even even these days. So, um, so you know, your 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 forty two episodes. I don't know. Does the forty two even count all the mini myths that you've done? You've done a lot more, more than that, right? No. Well, counting the mini myths, I think we're up to seventy something. Amazing. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah, it really is amazing. We we uh, I don't know I don't know what I thought we would be like at this stage, but we're almost we know we're getting close to a hundred, and it's exciting. That's great. That's great. Um, so, you know, going through this over the time, um, you've you've had of like we talked about some of the reactions and everything, um, and you know, I I have my short stories that I share about you know what we've done in, in ten years of what we've been doing here, um, and I think anybody that's been podcasting with any quality for a a period of time. Um, has got to have stories and ha- right. has to have highlights from that. Um, what 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 is a a reaction or an experience you've had from this that was really surprising that you had no idea to expect when you decided one day I want to start a podcast? The reaction I had, the the strongest reaction I had was when uh, I decided to do a podcast, but but that wasn't the reaction. I didn't get a reaction to that because it was just inside my head. Mm-hmm. And I'm hoping there aren't people inside my head reacting to the things I'm saying. That's a whole different podcast. Yeah, that, <laughs> but I did a Kickstarter. I didn't tell anybody. I didn't tell any of my relatives. I didn't seek advice from anybody. I went ahead and did a Kickstarter in order to raise funds for the equipment and all this stuff. You know, you, all this stuff is expensive stuff that you have, right. and also to get it going and 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 things like that. And I did the Kickstarter video and then then sent it out to everyone and I said, hey folks, to my friends and relatives, this is the secret thing I've been working on. See what you think, blah, blah, blah. And they responded incredibly positively. Aunts and uncles I hadn't heard from in a long time said, oh, why aren't you on television? And things like that. And it, it was just a, it was a shock, not only how well the people responded to the Kickstarter and how many people told me that we looked like we had the good presentation style for the for the show, uh, but how many people were interested in the subject? And I got flooded with, "Hey, will you look into this myth? Will you look into that myth? Will you look into this myth?" So the the initial response uh, was fantastic, and we continued to get 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 good feedback. Uh, I wish we had a lot more, but what seems to happen is people maybe our show is a little bit too comprehensive and a little bit too good. We 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 give an episode out. And people believe what we say, so they don't write back in and say, "Oh, wait a minute." Just like they believe the people the that they've been hearing about <laughs> yeah. the, the cross-dressing before. <laughs> so, yeah. So what I've done is now I'm starting to go on Reddit and asking people more uh, more detailed questions. Okay, what do you think about this? Why do you think that it, it, it's this way? Does this convince you? Hmm. And on Reddit now I'm getting more sort of uh, complicated responses. Yes, but that blah 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 right, blah. Right. Right. So, because if you're going to find detractors, it's going to be on Reddit. <laughs> yeah, and, and the more I learn about the different internet, you know, sources for success, mm-hmm. right? Finding better, more, more, more critiques, if yeah. you will, on Reddit. Yeah. Uh, finding other places to to uh, to to find new shows or things like that. The more the show is improved, I think. I think it's made a big, big difference. Awesome, awesome, and I see you're also getting out there a bit. Of course, uh, I got to swing down when you were at Ham Bones for a trivia night, and I know I've seen you. Uh, uh, pop up at a, a few events here. Um, what's kind of the you know uh, at Epicast? You're a part of that network, mm-hmm. and they're really big about getting out there. They're not just yes. podcasting in the basement. They're going to Black Forge Coffee. They're going to these other events. They're they're going in and and having a drinking partners interview with the with the uh, with Bill Mayor Bill Peduto here in Pittsburgh. Um, what, what's kind of your philosophy on getting out there, and what aspects of the show are you trying to bring out in front of a live audience? Well. It's it's a great thing to do, and we and we enjoyed it immensely. And we what we wanted to do, and what we did with our first live event was to talk about something that was really really had current value. And so we talked about wackadoodle presidential candidates from the past, you know, nut jobs who ran for president for whatever reason in the in the in the forties, the thirties, whatever. And that was a lot of fun because we had some very good historians on the panel. We had a lot of fun people in the audience, and. Uh, unfortunately, the audio didn't work out quite well, but it turned out to be such a good show that we re-recorded it in the studio, and it's been a mar- by far our most popular show uh, of 2016, even though that you know the year is new. And so we're trying to think of what we're going we're to try to follow the calendar. Sorry, 
whatever whatever comes up next that is a big deal politically or something in the culture, we're going to try to build a live show around that. And also maybe try to build a permanent, as an ongoing, quiz night somewhere. Because that's one way to gain an awful lot of uh, support and an awful lot of listeners. And be able to, to kind of uh, touch on a different brand. Uh, yeah, to, right. To do that, right? Right, right, uh, right It's very right, interesting right. And, and very localized because I, I also think, you know, uh, obviously, you know, uh, you know, what we do, like, this is a very localized podcast, I feel, mm-hmm. you know, having people that can come in into the studio in the couch from Pittsburgh representing that. But also we talk about, you know, the pro wrestling, which is very worldwide. Right. You know? And your topic seems like a very worldwide kind of topic. Um, how do you think, you know, that 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 kind of arrangement of you are getting out, you are getting around in the Pittsburgh area, but your audience is so much wider than that. Well, we can't go much further because of we can't afford it. Although sometimes I take trips, I've interviewed people in New York and I've interviewed people in Vermont uh, and things like that. Um, and I'm going to start looking into, and maybe you can help me uh, because you're such an expert, into using things like clamor and skype in order to have really good recordings at a distance Mm -hmm. but it's really the only place the only place we can go easily right and and pittsburgh's a big city we can build up a lot of followers and build a lot of buzz if you will but also what we want to do is to take whatever show we did like that wackadoodle presidential candidate show and then turn it into an episode as well so then that gets blasted out to uh the world literally we have international subscribers all over our number one um state in the u.s for listeners is california our number two is new york our number three is pennsylvania so we are not local really in any regard except that this is where we work yeah Yeah. but 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 the only place to really get out and engage the people is where you work so Right, and it's a good start. And if nothing else, it seems that if you're like, hey, look, these people are going out, even though it's like, yes, it's there in Pittsburgh, but it feels like, hey, this guy's important enough to get in front of other people that showed up and you hear them in the background, yeah. you know? And I think that's that, that's a really cool thing to present, you know, to show something different. And even break, out, break up, not the monotony of the show, but break it out of format a little sure. bit, too. I'm wondering whether you can have a live trivia night over, you know, uh, what do you call a it? A Google Hangout. Would a Google Hangout do? And you could have you could have trivia people in Tacoma, Washington, and and whatnot, and I all. Think over. Absolutely, I mean, you could you could do that. I mean, we I know I'm actually in talks with somebody who does a, a wrestling, a pro wrestling based uh, role playing game like Dungeons and Dragons, but pro wrestling. Yeah. And they do, like they do a game of that mm-hmm. uh, over Google Hangout. I, I imagine trivia night could be uh, something you could do on a Google Hangout. And and you can set that to broadcast live. There's not much overhead because you're bringing people on there. Now we're just kind of talking, very talking shop at this point. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. But but that, that's what happens on these shows. Um, but no, I think that's completely something you can do. It's definitely within the realm. But, but you see, this is why what we're doing is really new, new media. Mm-hmm. Because, on, you know, unless you did it on ham radio, there was no way to play Monopoly <laughs> live across the country. <laughs> uh, I mean, people used to play chess through the mail they mail each other envelopes with their moves but mm-hmm. that's not that's not quite as exciting but okay well well I'll, I'll, believe me i'll be leaning on you for this Google <laughs> hangout idea i'm i'm the least technical person working in in the in the co-working space we have at work hard pittsburgh i'm i'm always asking everyone you know what is this cord for <laughs> and they'll say that fits into your iphone and the other part goes but into your that's ear. one of the nice things about being in a co-working space like yes. that is you do have that you know i can i can you know poke at the guy next to me and be like hey uh who i happen to know works in politics and some ass like be like what's the deal with this thing going on you know yeah, or, yeah, or yeah. there's so many people around us uh I, I think that's the great thing about uh, up there at work hard is you know, I've met so so many awesome people, other videographers, other podcasters. Uh, uh, I keep running into people that worked in public radio, which is this fascinating mm-hmm. thing because I feel like I, I I feel like one I feel like they're better trained than I am in the audio, uh, <laughs> you know, um, um, world. And and but I, I but you know, to be able to kind of jam with those people is, is a really cool aspect, and I think is a growing experience rather than just kind of sitting at home with my dog that barks at everybody that comes in, as you can tell when you came in here, um, you know, and and, yeah. and that's my coworker. <laughs> well, I mean, also another thing that that uh, wouldn't wouldn't work for you so much, but was tremendously important for me is everyone is so much younger than I am, mm-hmm. and that really really makes a big difference because they talk about things that they assume 
I know because I'm a podcaster, uh, and but I have no idea what they're talking about. And I used to sort of like push back against their advice. Oh, I don't want, I don't want to do that. I, 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 I don't understand how that might work. But then I change. If, if I change my mind, like when Josh Lucas, the head of Work Hard Pittsburgh, finally convinced me Reddit was a serious thing to do, and I'm, I'm an idiot not to. I'm still do trying it. to wrap my head around Reddit and how I can adequately apply it. I've experimented with some things, and I'm still. And I'm, yeah. I was, that's awesome that you're you're finding your way into that. Well, it it worked. It worked very very well, and a couple of other things that uh, that are you know our sound engineer Buzzy Torque has told me that I, that that just didn't ring natural for me because I'm. 30 years older than him and stuff like that. But then I thought, well, I'll do, I'll do it the way Buzzy wants it done. And mm-hmm. sure enough, every single time these guys are right. Right. Because they know this stuff and I don't. And it's a humbling experience, especially when you used to be a professor and there's a little bit in the back of your consciousness that says, well, you know everything. So, you know, you know, you got, you got, you got a paper that says that you know everything. Yeah, right? And you realize <laughs> that to, it, it, not only do you not know everything, but the young people are so dynamic and they're mm-hmm. so interesting and they really, really want this stuff to succeed. So I, I, I it's completely changed my mind about my work habits, if you will. Certainly. It's, it's, it's a great aspect of you for me, just to having other people that do podcasting video because right. I know I don't know everything. I know there's things that are not the best of, of the way I produce things. And to be able to kind of, you know, pick like Buzzy's brain or, or uh, uh, um, you know, some of the other guys that have been through there, you know, has a great, I think, I think for anybody, they have to be open-minded in something like that mm-hmm. and, and not think that they're going to like, well, I, I know what I'm doing, you know, and, right. and, and, and not be open to that. That's why I love, you know, we were talking about PodCamp uh, earlier yeah. before yeah, the yeah. show. Um, I go as, as a presenter for the most part, but I got my ears wide open because there's plenty of people doing different versions or other other kinds of things that I can graze ideas off of. I usually come out of there with a list of things to improve on. And now I come out of uh, uh, work hard at least once a week with a list of things to change yeah. about what I do with things. And I, I, I think it's, a, um, you know, not just an age thing. You know, I think that's a, well, I'm the person that's been doing this podcasting thing for X amount of years. Obviously, I'm the expert. And nobody's going to be able to teach me anything. And I think that shuts you down from any progress. So... Right, but uh, a lot of things are hard, harder for me to understand. Harder for me to understand intuitively because all this stuff is so so new. Right, you know, right. I was playing. I was buying forty fives, you know, <laughs> when I was young, and and uh, the you know my my version of uh, London Calling by the Clashes was the well, I bought it when it came out on on a big LP. So, uh, you know, I'm still in that mindset. And it takes a long time to uh, to think differently, and and I think the only way I can start to learn to think differently is to take Buzzy, take Josh, take other people uh, at work hard, take you at your word. No, this is the better way to do it, and just try it. Mm-hmm. And every single time I've been reluctant to do something, but Buzzy says this is the best thing to do, or Josh says this is the best thing to do, or you say the best thing to do. I'm always wrong. You guys are always right. <laughs> so I, I be, I'm beginning to realize there's a senior citizen aspect to this, and I just need to do what I'm told. That's okay. I feel the same way about Snapchat myself. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I haven't even gotten there. I haven't even started Instagram. So, you know, that's how far behind I am. I'm having the, the, the PA students at my one client's place say, so how do you do this thing with the faces on Snapchat? <laughs> you know, yeah. and trying to figure that out myself. So. Hey, man, it's been awesome talking with you. Professor Buzzkill is the podcast. Uh, tell, tell everybody uh, uh, where they can find everything you're doing online. And, uh, and, and if there's anything significant coming up, uh, you have the floor. Well, of course, you can always find it on ProfessorBuzzkill.com. We have not only the latest podcast player right up there, the player with the latest podcast episode. We have the blog post, which includes not only the sort of script of the podcast, but uh, further resources for you to look up and, and, and re- do extra reading. Our main episode, our, our big myth bustings, are, bust, are always on Tuesday. And then on Thursday, we have mini myths. And so that's that's the easiest way to, 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 to learn about the flow of our show. And, of course, it's available for subscription on iTunes and Podbean and all the other ones, Stitcher. And what we're, we're thinking of adding a few more shows during the week because there's so many other venues we can do and as that happens we'll try to keep you up to date but professor buzzkill.com you can send us comments you can send us you know flaming <laughs> criticisms whatever you want and uh, we'll 
definitely pay attention to it. And, and also, it's not just you on the show. You no, have no, no, other no. Uh, buzz killers, I guess, yes. uh, uh, as a part of it. Yes, buzz killers coming in and out. Ian Buzzkill, uh, who's also on, has his own show on on the Epicast network. Network Marta Buzzkill, who mm-hmm. uh, runs her Marta on the Move. Yes, yeah, so well, we just had her on Awesome Cast a few weeks ago. Awesome, yeah. awesome person. And um, Josh uh, Hausman and Amanda Hausman from Cinnabard Films, excellent people, excellent artists, have, have been on the show in the past and are, are going to be on the show again. So, yeah, we try to keep a, a, a sort of a rotating team going to make it interesting. And so people just don't get bored listening to me over and over and over and over, <laughs> and over again. And, of course, we, whenever we can, we try to interview an expert on the subject we're talking about. Awesome. Awesome. Go check it out. It's a fun podcast. I just love uh, some of those mornings. I just go and, and run through all the mini miss uh, that I have <laughs> caught up on. And it's a, it's a really good listen. Uh, so go please check it out. ProfessorBuzzKill.com and uh, follow him on the Twitter. Uh, BuzzKillProf right. over there as well. Uh, so thank you, everybody. Uh, check him out. Check out all of our past interviews over at AwesomeCast.net. Just uh, click on that t- uh, category topic, Awesome Chat, and you'll get all of those lined up there. We're talking everything from podcaster to technologist to founders of companies uh, in Pittsburgh and abroad. And uh, we hope you have a lot of fun uh, with a lot of those interviews. And subscribe to everything. And uh, drop us a line if there's anybody who you think is awesome we should be talking to at AwesomeCast on the Twitter, AwesomeCast at SorgatronMedia.com. And please also check out awesome cast on the facebook group and page as well uh thank you to our awesome guest you've been our awesome audience have an awesome week this show is a member of the sorgatron media podcast network find out more at sorgatronmedia.com